Hello, I am Dr. Radhamani, Professor and Department Head, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, Kochi. Today, I am going to tell about hypertension in pregnancy. This is <coughs> one of the leading cause of maternal death. Even though the incidence in all over uh, world is 2 to 5 percentage, in the Asian countries and India it is 10 percentage. Now let us see what is the criteria of hypertension in pregnancy. A blood pressure recording of more than 140-90 mm mercury, two readings, 4 to 6 hours apart after 20 weeks in a previously normal tendency patient. The ACOG criteria is gestational hypertension, preeclampsia and eclampsia syndrome. Preeclampsia means gestational hypertension with the proteinuria and preeclampsia patient with the, with the convulsion is called eclampsia. Chronic hypertension that is hypertension predating pregnancy and preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension means chronic hypertensive patient when they develop proteinuria. Coming to the gestational hypertension, blood pressure record of 140-90 already I told you after 20 weeks but that there is no proteinuria and the prognosis is <coughs> and it can be again convert, uh, classified into non-severe and severe. Severe means blood, the blood pressure is more than 160-110 mm mercury. The, but the clinical course is even though it is gestation hypertension there is a 15 to 25 percent incidence of preeclampsia and 5 percent incidence of eclampsia and the hypertension come back to normal 12 weeks postpartum so it is possible to diagnose as gestation hypertension of, after delivery. Prognosis is good if the hypertension develop after 36 weeks and non-severe but there are certain predictors that is which indicate the patient may go for preeclampsia that too the patient may develop preeclampsia within 1 to 5 weeks of gestation hypertension and uh, when the hypertension develops before 34 weeks when the blood has a mean blood pressure is more than 135 uric acid is 5.2 milligram per deciliter abnormal uterine artery doppler elevated sflt1 and reduced levels of vascular endothelial growth factor and uh, placental growth factor these are the predictors of progression to preeclampsia how do we manage non severe gestational hypertension opd follow up weekly or biweekly home monitoring the blood pressure if possible that is helps to rule out white coat hypertension measure when the patient comes for antenatal checkup measure the protein excretion to uh, protein rate and ratio and also evaluate for uh, features of severe preeclampsia because there is a 10 to 50 percent chance of preeclampsia in these patients. Antihypertensis and if the blood pressure 140-90 in subsequent visits it is better to start antihypertensis. And also you look for the tell the patient to, uh, for the daily fetal moment count to know the vital well-being where to look for in a non-stress test. Uh, by physical profile and AFI growth scan after 28 weeks. Doppler is indicated if there is fetal growth restriction. Lab evaluation includes weekly liver function test, renal function test, platelet, urine, protein, creatinine ratio. And non, non severe, the uh, obstetric management is we can wait till 39 to 40 weeks provided the blood pressure is controlled, <coughs> no growth restriction, and the lab parameters are normal. So, we need to admit the patient by 38 weeks. It takes steps to deliver the woman between 39 weeks, 39 to 40. The frequent, whereas if the blood pressure, there is frequent rise of blood pressure, even if it is gestation hypertension, we need to deliver by 36 to 37 weeks. Whereas severe gestation hypertension, that is more than 160, 110 blood pressure, uh, more, than, more than 34 weeks, we can consider delivery. And if it is less than 34 weeks, steroids for lung maturity, that is beta methasone, 12 mg, 24 hours apart. And if the blood pressure is more than 160, 110 to control the hypertension, we have to give IV labetalol, 20 uh, mg every 10 to 15 minutes, check the BP. And if the desired blood pressure is not maintained, we have to repeat the dose at 40, 80, and 80 at every 10 to 15 minutes. The maximum cumulative dose is 220 mg. And if this patient then complains headache as a convulsion prophylaxis, we can give magnesium sulfate that is 4 gram loading IV followed by 1 gram per hour infusion for 24 hours. Various regimes are there, care for regime is in way to give and, and addition 4 gram IM also. Labor induction after steroid cover. Preeclampsia syndrome means there is 
uh, hypertension with the proteinuria already I have described but there is a change in definition it can be either proteinuria or a multi organ involvement because we are we are seeing help syndrome without proteinuria in 20 percent of cases. What is proteinuria? There is normally <coughs> 300 milligram in 24 hours. If this 300 excretion in pregnancy, 300 milligram more during 24 hours, uh, or the protein gradient ratio is more than 0.3, it is considered as proteinuria. And if these two methods are not available, then dipstick test uh, one plus indicate more than 30 milligram per deciliter. And urine protein gradient ratio is currently preferred and correlates well with the 24 hour urine protein estimation. The classification is non severe and severe preeclampsia. Non severe means blood pressure less than 160 up to less than 160 110 with the proteinuria, whereas severe preeclampsia means there is multi organ involvement more than 160 110 VP, like either headache, visual disturbances, epigastric pain, thrombocytopenia, elevated liver and same screen creatinine, I more than 1.1 or doubling, pulmonary edema, and massive proteinuria. These are the risk factors of preeclampsia like primary party, age less than 18, advanced age, uh, high BMI, multiple pregnancy, high dietary form mold, past history of preeclampsia, family history of preeclampsia, low socioeconomic status, maternal medical conditions like diabetes, hypertension, renal disease, connective tissue disorders and antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. A little knowledge about pathophysiology is important because then only we are able to know the maternal complications and also investigations to do for these patients. <clears throat> Normally during pregnancy we can see that there is a uh, first wave trophoblastic invasion wherein the trophoblast invade the distal artery and second wave trophoblastic invasion is myometrial part of the spiral arteries, the my, uh, my, uh, media of the vessel is in, uh, replaced by the trophoblast invert the vessel and replaces the media. That is a remodeling of the vessel occurs and this is not happening in patients who are going to develop preeclampsia. Maybe it is due to vascular, environmental, immunological, genetic factors. All these factors are elaborated previously. So what happens? Uh, the, this trophoblastic invasion normally is taking place for a good supply of blood flow to the placenta. The vessel is dilatory, it will not respond to vasoconstrictors. But whereas patients going to develop preeclampsia, this uh, trophoblastic second wave trophoblastic invasion is not taking place and the placenta become ischemic. And then when the placenta become ischemic, what happens is uh, the cytokines are activated and neutrophils, uh, free radicals and uh, it, this will cause endothelial damage. When endothelial damage occurs, there is leakage of fluid from intravascular to extravascular compartment occurs and that leads to uh, edema and severe edema and even pulmonary edema. There is also altered pro pro prostaglandin production that is constrictive prostaglandins like a <coughs> PG, F2 alpha and uh, uh, thromboxane are more formed than the dilated prostaglandins and also vasoconstrictors are released as a result of endothelial damage and the placenta when the placenta ischemia occurs it also liberates SFLT1 endoglins one and also uh, there is a, the vascular endothelial growth factor and the placental growth factors are reduced and uh, all this leads to the multi organ uh, uh, dysfunction. Let us see what are the maternal complications of uh, severe preeclampsia. Uh, abruption uh, can occur because of the spasm of the vessels and also hypertension. Most of the patients go, we have need to deliver early, that is uh, preterm labor, we need to induce. And then uh, because of the uh, cerebral edema, patient can go for eclampsia and even with the hypertension also can develop hemorrhage and thrombosis. And then papilledema, blindness and retinal detachment pulmonary edema, HELP syndrome, rarely rupture of the liver hematoma and DIC and acute renal failure. The fetal complications are because of the uteroplastal insufficiency, fetal growth restriction, intrauterine death and this also will increase perinatal mortality. What are the long term complications? The middle complications are recurrent preeclampsia, chronic hypertension, cardiovascular disease and metabolic syndrome. Long term fetal complications are cerebral palsy and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So, what are the investigations we need to do? If we know the complications, it is better for easy for us to uh, write what are all the investigations required for a patient with a severe preeclampsia. Like, we need to look for the album, uh, pro, uh, nature of the uh, hypertension, whether it is uh, uh, preeclampsia, and then so that you're an albuminoprotein gradient ratio 
and then the platelet count and the CBC will give you the hematocrit as well as the platelet count and the liver chemistry uh, and also peripheral smear and then serum creatinine. Uh, fetal well-being, you look for well-being by ultrasound, uh, NSG and then BPP. Uh, Non-severe cases, uh, non-severe preeclampsia that is there is no evidence of multi-organ involvement, there is no massive proteinuria but there is blood pressure with the proteinuria. We can deliver by uh, maximum stretches 37 weeks, stable patients and control with a controlled OP. Uh, blood pressure if the patient is residing nearby op care residing far away consider ip care initially uh, what are the conditions for outpatient care we need to give awareness about the symptoms of severe preeclampsia and also someone should be there with the patient in the home to monitor to look after the patient if at all any emergency comes she has to <coughs> immediately uh, report to the hospital so to understand the need for hospitalization if severe symptoms develop uh, ideally live close to hospital uh, able to check BP twice daily and uh, they must willing for a bi-weekly antenatal checkup and when the patient come we had to look for the blood pressure lab monitoring and the fetal surveillance and uh, awareness about the symptoms of severe preeclampsia till the patient to look for daily fetal movement count and then is a batch for symptoms of per headache vomiting <coughs> epigastric pain and reduced urine output and, and they are also instructed to report immediately if persistent headache, not responding to acetaminophen, visual changes when the patient develops new shortness of breath, when she experiences right upper quadrant or epigastric pain, when reduced feet movement, when there is bleeding and pain abdomen which indicate abruption, when there is rupture of membranes and labor pain. So all these must be told to the patient uh, when we are keeping the patient in the home. And activity wise uh, and strict bed rest is unnecessary because there is again a chance of DVT can occur. So restricted activity is recommended uh, resting in the left lateral position augment uteroplacental flow. These are the lab investigations uh, to do for already I uh, elaborated this. Monitoring in non-severe cases they uh, if the blood pressure is less than 160, 110. Uh, we can uh, start antihypertensive labetal oral tablet 200 mg BD or nifedipine 10 or 20 mg 6th volume or 8th volume depending upon the BP. Uh, if we are starting with the lopa 250 to 500 mg 6th volume. Uh, if the blood pressure is elevated BP more than 160 110, immediate hospitalization is required. And then in that case, we have to give IV parental antibiotics either IV labetal or nif uh, every 10, 10 to 15 minutes. And then uh, if, if labetalol is not given, nifedipine is a drug that you prefer, then you give uh, 10 mg. Then every 20 minutes repeat uh, 20 and then again add another 20 minutes, 20 mg. If it is high, acute hypertension, hydrolysis also is another option. And if it is less than 34 weeks, it gives steroid for lung maturity. And then uh, in non-severe preeclampsia, we have to look for the fetal surveillance and the fetal movement. Interval growth scan at 28 weeks. Doppler is indicated only if there is fetal growth restriction. And in non severe, we can uh, the plan delivery uh, by uh, up to 37 weeks. Earlier delivery is indicated when there is severe preeclampsia. The moderate delivery is based on obstetric indication if there is preeclampsia with the breach or placenta previous way to go for cesarean section. Whereas if there is no other uh, indications, uh, uh, do a vaginal examination as the pelvis, Bishop score. And then even we, even we can induce labor with the, depending upon the fair of the cervix either mechanical or prostaglantin. Avoid prolonged labor. CS is preferred if there is severe preeclampsia and unfavorable cervix. And intrapartum management is continuous CTG monitoring, partogram to monitor the progress of labor, maternal vitals monitoring and restricted IV fluids. Watch for evidence of any pulmonary edema. Whereas uh, this is about the non-severe, coming to the severe preeclampsia, we had to admit the patient in the delivery room, maternal evaluation, blood pressure half hourly, urine output hourly and also you had to look for the symptoms and signs of a severe preeclampsia like altered sensorium, visual disturbance, epigastric pain, headache. Investigation definitely we immediately send all the investigations which I already elaborated. 
and then also you look for the fatal growth with and the NST biophysical profile if you suspect growth restriction Doppler also an immediate management is uh, give the because the blood pressure is more than 160 110 uh, we have to give antihypertensives like IV labetrolol I already uh, described you if it is 20 mg IV over a period of 1 to 2 minutes and then you uh, check the BP every 10 minutes and then you give the drug 20, 40 uh, then every 10 minutes 80 80 the maximum cumulative dose is 220 yeah, and also you can give steroid if it is less than 34 weeks I mean, and if the patient is having severe features my magnesium sulfate is also ideal seizure pro this is a seizure prophylaxis and then more than 34 weeks severe preeclampsia we can plan for immediate delivery as waiting further will jeopardize both mother and fetus less than 26 weeks pre viable period termination after the stabilizing the mother but uh, what about 26 to 34 weeks there is a role of expectant management provided the mother and fetus stable, tertiary care with the multidisciplinary team, experienced obstetricians, appropriate neonatal facility, IC facility and the fetal medicine department. But hospitalized till delivery, blood pressure monitoring, urine output, intake output chart, urine protein rate and ratio and then you start antihypertensives, magnesium and then steroids and evaluate the mother and fetus uh, do the investigations daily and then immediate delivery by cesarean section is needed when there is persistent high blood pressure in spite of antihypertensives, impending symptoms eclampsia, abruption, pulmonary edema, severe for fetal growth restriction with abnormal Doppler and non with a non reassuring fetal heart. So timing a delivery if everything is mother is stable, fetus is stable and no uh, evidence of worsening other symptoms we can wait till 34 weeks but if maternal condition worsen immediate delivery irrespective of the gestational age. Unfavorable cervix associated fetal growth restriction uh, preterm we have to go for cesarean section regional anesthesia recommended favorable cervix NST normal can plan for induction labor uh, if we are uh, inducing labor we have to monitor the blood pressure continuous CTG partogram no prolonged labor second share cut short second share with the instruments depending upon the findings and then active management of third share labor avoid methogen what about the postnatal care after the delivery we have to keep the patient in the HD for another 72 hours because close BP monitoring is needed this is the time again patient can go for a postpartum eclampsia then continue the antihypertensives either nifedipine is ideal and if the blood pressure is persistently elevated even after 6 weeks postpartum further evaluation and consult consultation with the nephrologist is needed. So how do we prevent preeclampsia? In the preconceptional education is very important, close monitoring and early intervention, calcium supplementation 2 gram per day if there is calcium deficiency and then low dose aspirin can be considered uh, the, now the dose is changed to 150 milligram per day previously it was 75 or 60 to 80 western standard Hyp uh, indications for low dose aspirin hypertensive disorders in the previous pregnancy chronic kidney disease is uh, sle apla type 1 or 2 diabetes chronic hypertension uterine artery high resistance detected at the time of aneuploidy screening thank you i will come again with the help syndrome and eclampsia